just marinating here, nice external rotation. And we're going to bring the hands down the other side of the body. And on the inhale, lift the arms up over the shoulders. And a nice, big, long torso stretch. And then exhale all the way back down by the side of the body. And do that four more times. So inhale is the rising. Maybe stretching a little bit more. Exhale is the release. Inhale is the rise, so it's almost like a moving meditation. Exhale, release. Inhale is the rise. Exhale, release. And then one more inhale, rising all the way up, stretching out. And exhale, release. Let's take it to a hold if it feels appropriate. Arms up. Lay the hands either on the mat or you can take them wider if it's a little bit more comfortable. Or you can pop cushions underneath. We're here for five breaths. And then bring the hands down by the side of the body. And gently, hands out from the outer edges of the knees, we pull the knees back into the center. I'm hoping you've got belts. So we're going to be using our belts. I'll give you a couple of moments to find anything that would be suitable as a belt. Tie, belt, Part of a jump or anything that will be suitable as a belt just to lengthen your arms a little bit. So draw your right knee into your chest and place the belt around the ball of the right foot. So I want you to take your leg away from your body in order for the leg to be straight. So if you draw it into your body, your knee will tend to bend and we can't get into the hamstring. So take it away from the body until the leg is straight. This is a very passive hamstring stretch. We're not pushing the back of the knee out at all. We're keeping it a tiny bit soft. But what we're going to do is turn the toes towards the nose and the heels towards the ceiling. So we can get this stretch right along the back of that right leg. And then we're going to make it a little bit more challenging if we want to. We're going to stretch the left leg long. Leave that foot flat if we want to. We're going to place the hand, left hand on the left thigh, keep that left buttock down. And we're going to turn those toes towards the body as well. So both these legs are in exactly the same position. It's a tiny bit of softness at the back of the knees. So we can really just breathe into the hamstring. We're going to change the position. We're going to leave the right hand on the belt, the left hand on the left thigh. Take an inhale and exhale the right leg out to the right. So we're going right into the inner thighs now. And again, we're going to keep a softness at the back of the knee. We're going to take five breaths here. Subtle bend of that right leg will take us back to the center and we'll simply change the hands on the belt. So the left hand is now on the belt. And we're gonna let that right leg drop right over to the left. And on its journey over, we're gonna let that right buttock lift off the mat. So we're gonna have a real stretch in the glutes, right buttock. These are also your hip flexors. We're gonna take five breaths here.
the subtle bend of that right leg. We're going to bring it back to the center. And again, we're going to keep the leg straight up to the ceiling. We're not going to bend the knee. So we're going to maybe take the leg further away from us. Keep the softness in the back of the knee. For those who have no neck issues, we're going to lift the head and the shoulders, but only a very short amount. So just about six inches. Take an inhale. And on the exhale, lift up the head and shoulders about six inches. And then draw that right leg towards you. So it's not how high you lift your shoulders. It's how you draw that right leg towards you. If you lift up your shoulders too high, you'll go into your hip flexors. They'll be doing the work instead of the hamstrings. And then we release the head down. Remove the belt, draw the right knee into the chest, and place the right foot flat onto the mat. I'm going to do exactly the same with the opposite leg. So the left leg stretches up. And we can keep that right foot flat onto the mat. Or we can have it long. We think about the toes of both feet pointing towards the body. The leg is a little bit further away from the body to keep the hamstrings activated. And there's a softness in the knee. Five breaths. I'm going to keep exactly the same position with the hand. We're just going to take that leg out to the left. We'll get right into those adductors. I'm going to keep our right hand on that right hip to keep that right buttock down. We're going to have five breaths here. The subtle bend of the knee will bring the leg back to the center. We'll change our hands on the belt, so right hands on the belt now. And we'll just take that left leg over to the right, lifting up the left buttock off the mat as we journey over to the right. And again, we'll take five breaths here. Up the bend of that left knee brings you back to the center. And again, we have that straight leg, both toes facing towards the body. And only if your neck allows you to do so, take an inhale on the exhale, six inch lift only. And then we draw that straight leg, left leg towards us, really getting into those hamstrings. And it's easy breathing. And then release the head down. So that's quite a, an intense practice for the neck, which is strengthening the neck somewhat. Bring that left knee in. Bring the right knee in. Have a little rock and a roll. Place your feet flat onto the mat. Bring the soles of your feet together. Open up into that Vadakanasana. And then just draw the knees together. And I want you to walk your feet out to the sides of your mat. So walk your feet out to the sides of your mat. So the knees are wide apart. The arms are as if you're in a cross, just nice and stretched up by the side of your body. And we're going to drop both knees down to the right. We're going to get right into the quadriceps now, right into the front hips as well. Easy breathing. And then back to the center, and we'll drop the knees to the left. Back to the center, to the right. To the center and to the left. To the center and to the right. 
from the center and to the left. Now then this is the final one. Hoping you're feeling a nice tug on the front hips as well, to the right. And to the left. And then come back to the center. Hands down by the side of the body, the right leg stretches up to the ceiling and the right ankle crosses over the left knee. We flex the foot to protect the knee. Options, you're staying here. Through the triangle, round the back of the left thigh, lifting up that left leg. Nice, easy breathing. You want to make it more intense, hands in front of the kneecap, and draw in. Nice, easy breathing. Two more breaths. And then bring the left foot flat to the mat. We're going to keep that left foot flat onto the mat and take the right foot over to the left and just have a twist. So, we're just having that twist. Nice, easy breathing. And then slowly we'll come back to that original position and bring the right foot down. Left leg stretches up to the ceiling, ankle over the knee. With options to stay right where we are. Or through the triangle, lift up the right leg, draw in. Perhaps hands in front of the kneecap. You may get some pinching in this left hip, so just be aware of that and take it easy. Couple more breaths. And then we release the right foot to the mat. And we'll just take the left knee over to the right. And find that twist. And stretch the arms. Five breaths. Then slowly we'll come back to the original position. Release the left foot, bring both knees into the chest. Okay, we're moving now from the hips into the abdominals. We're gonna keep the knees over the chest, stretch the arms out to the side. We're gonna take the knees hovering to the right, just hovering, take them close to the mat, but hover. So just going to feel this in the abdominals a little bit. Back to the center and hover to the left. And again, the closer you are to the mat, deeper intensity. Back to the center, you hover. To the center, and you hover. To the center, and hover. Really being aware of your breath throughout this practice. Inhale and the exhale, hover. And then we have one more. Inhale, exhale, hover. Inhale, exhale, hover. Then slowly come back to the center, both knees into the chest, rock and roll. Feet one at a time, flat onto the mat. I'm going to roll over to come into all fours. So 
going to work into the shoulders and into the hips in this position. I'm just going to show you what we're going to be doing. You're going to take your left hand to the opposite side and bring the right hand by the side of your knees. You're going to lift up the chest, lift up. On the exhale, we'll take a twist. Come back to the center. If you want to make it a little bit more challenging, you can lay down. Then lift up the chest and then twist. Lay down or high. Lift up and then twist. And then this is the last one. Stay high or low. Lift up and then twist. Come back to neutral. Let's take it to child posture. Then we come back into all fours again and we walk the right hand to the opposite mat, edge of the mat, and the left hand down towards the knees. And we stay high, lift up, inhale. On the exhale, twist, or we have low. Inhale is a lift, exhale is a twist. Really observe what's happening. Take it low or high. Inhale is a lift, exhale is a twist. And then this is the last one. Inhale, lift, and exhale, twist. And then we come back into child, but this time we'll bring the soles, the toes together, we'll open the knees wide and we'll take it into wisdom instead. So we're just going to have those knees wide apart, the heart drops through towards the mat, and we settle here for five breaths. Walk your hands all the way back. We're coming into all fours again. So knees are underneath the hips, hands are directly underneath the shoulders, arms are strong, toes are tucked. We're going to inhale the gaze up and the buttocks up, have that back bend. On the exhale, rounding the back, stretching out the back, gaze to the navel. Four more. Inhaling. And exhaling, stretching. In your own time. This is the last one. Come back to neutral, untuck your toes, child posture. Feel free to stay in child posture. We're going to take a long hold in downward facing dog if you want to. Arms stretched out in front of you. Remember, a downward facing dog can always be dolphin. If you've got shoulder issues, you can place your forearms on the mat and take the dolphin down dog. So super long arms if you're coming with me. Onto your knees. Tuck your toes. Lift the knees up and exhale to downward facing dog. Now we have worked the hamstrings, but they still may want a little bit more encouragement. So feel free to walk your dog, bend your knees, and just walk your dog. So we're in this position for five breaths. So I want you to really think about your downward facing dog. Your head is hanging in between your inner upper arms. Your tailbone is to the ceiling. Your knees can be bent, or the legs can be straight. The heels can meet the mat, or they can approach the mat. The navel is drawing towards the spine, and the front thighs are pushing the back thighs back. You have a beautiful long stretch 
the whole of the spine. One more breath. And then release the knees down. Untuck the toes. And this time, bring your hands behind you. Place them onto your heels. Forehead on the mat or on a block. And soften. The next time we come into downward facing dog, we're going to work into the hips. The super long arms in front. Remember, if you don't want to do downward facing dog, your option would be to work into your hips with toes together, knees wide apart in your wisdom. For those who are coming with me, super long arms, onto the knees, tuck the toes, lift the knees, exhale dog. So the right leg rises to the ceiling and the right heel approaches the right buttock and we twist at the waist and we try and keep the shoulders neutral and twist at the waist. And then bring that right foot back down again and the left leg rises and the left heel goes to the left buttock and we twist at the waist whilst trying to keep the shoulders fairly neutral. And then release that foot down. One more round for those who want to. Downward facing dog for those who don't. Or child posture. Right leg rising. Heel to buttock. And then release. Left leg rising. Heel to buttock. And then release. And then bring your knees down to the mat and release. So we're going to take uh, a little bit of a different posture. Some of you may want to attempt it. Some of you may want to not bother. So I'm going to take you into Sphinx, first of all. And this way that you can see what's going on or whether you want to do it or not. So it's taking that twist in the downward facing dog into another posture. So I'll just, I haven't done it for a while, so let's hope it works well. I'm just gonna show you what it is and then we can do it all together. So if you don't want to do it, you're staying into Sphinx and you're just chilling out here and you can even have a Sphinx like this. So I'm gonna just show you what it is while you're working into the spine. So we have that nice hip opener in downward facing dog, I'm going to lift the right leg up. I'm going to twist and then I'm going to find the floor. And then I'm going to lift up. And then come back. Take a downward facing dog again. And lift the left leg up. Feel the buttock. And then I'm going to find the floor behind me and lift up. It's quite intense. And then I'm coming back to Sphinx. Rest. To have a little chat with you. So you don't have to do that. It's just a little bit of fun. It's a bit of balance. It's a bit of shoulder work and the arm work as well. And uh, let's just see whether it works for us. I'm going to do it together with you, or you can stay in Sphinx. The hand under shoulders, elbows draw in, rise up, tuck the toes, down the facing dog. So Malcolm's going to attempt it as well, so this should be fun. So the right leg rises, heel to buttock. We're going to swivel with that standing leg and bring that back foot behind us and then lift up. And then come back, take down the facing dog to recover. And then the left leg rises, swivel with the standing leg, place the foot behind us and lift up. And then we come back to down the facing dog to recover. So those who practice that one may want to do it again. I'm giving you the opportunity. Or you come back to your space. So just have an opportunity to do it again if you want to, or you come into Sphinx. So I'm not going to do it again. I want my breath to recover. Nice easy breathing.
I'm guessing that if you've tried it again, you're about to finish. So coming back into child posture, we're going to downward facing dog, couple of planks, and then we'll come up to standing. So hands underneath the shoulders, elbows draw in, we rise up into child posture. Super long arms, tuck the toes, lift the knees, exhale dog. Options for standing down and facing dog. We'll float the shoulders over the wrist, plank, push the heels away, activate those legs, make them work. Squeeze the buttocks. Exhale back to dog. Inhale into your plank, activate the legs as soon as you arrive, push the heels away, squeeze the buttocks, front thighs to back thigh, gaze at the mat. Exhale back to dog. This is the last one. Inhale, activate. Exhale. Let's take the walk forward. Bend the knees. Inhale, rising all the way up. And exhale back. Okay, so this is the first standing posture. So let's make Tadasana a nice standing posture. So soften the shoulders. Malcolm's just checking the time for me, which is nice because the clock was turned the other way. So soften the shoulders, separate the feet slightly, and find your beautiful Tadasana. And then bring your hands in front of your heart. And inhale the arms all the way up, big circle, and exhale back to your heart center. Inhale is a lift, and exhale back to your heart center. Three more, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. Exhale. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Bring your hands down by the side of the body, onto the tippy toes. Lift. Then really stretch out. Draw the heels together. Squeeze the buttocks. And exhale. Release. Inhale is the lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Last one. Inhale, lift. And exhale, release. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Standing pigeon. We take the right ankle and pop it on top of the left knee. Or not. I'm going to move the hips back. Bow. I'm going to take the arms forward. Nice, easy breathing. Hips back. Arms lengthen in front, gaze is neutral, foot is flexed. Then inhale is rise and exhale release. Bring your hands in front of your heart. Soften the breath. Keep your gaze fixed, take your left ankle across your right knee and stay here. Or hips go back. Lying, arms are forward, flexing the foot, breathing. Don't work it fall out. And then inhale the arms up and exhale back down the other side of the body. Separate your feet underneath your hips. Take your arms wide. Inhale the right arm up. Stretch. Get them wide. 
stretch. Arms up and stretch. Arms up and stretch. And then one more. Arms up and stretch. Arms up and stretch. And then arms up again. Okay, bring the feet together. We keep the arms stretched. Isometric, so weight in the arms, working the upper arms. Turn the palms to the ceiling. Point the thumbs backwards. So really getting into the triceps as well. Soften the shoulders. Take the arms down, arms facing down. Take the arms up. Take the palms down. Arms up. Palms down. Palms up. Palms down. Palms up. Two more. Palms down. Palms up. Palms down, palms up. Bring your hands into prayer. Ooh, that feels nice. Inhale the arms up, big circle. Exhale back to your heart centers. Inhale is a lift. Exhale back to your hearts. Inhale is a lift. Exhale back to your hearts. Two more, inhale, exhale, last one, inhale, and exhale. Good work, guys. So we're going to come into downward facing dog and from there we're going to come into our pigeon position on the mat. I'll give you an option for those who have got troublesome knees. So we're going to come to the front of the mat. And then lift up the arms all the way up. Nice big stretch again. Bend the knees, hands onto the mat. You can take your right leg back, and your left leg back, into down facing dog. You can drop your knees to the mat if it makes it easier to get into your pigeon from here. I'll take you into pigeon first, and then I'll give you an option to do something different if you don't want to do the pigeon. So the right leg rises to the ceiling. And we bend the knee and pass the heart and the right knee comes to the right thumb. And then your back toe is tucked, so we're gonna walk that back leg a little bit further away. Onto your fingertips, we're gonna lift up, really lift up, have a back bend. So this is crab pigeon. You know, check out your knees, feeling okay here. If it's not, I'll follow you with the alternative. You wanna go a little bit deeper. At the moment, the heel's probably in the groin, nice and safe there, it means the knee's quite happy. If you want to go a little bit deeper, the knee allows you to, just lean to the right, flex the foot again, and bring it further forward. Then fingertips onto the mat, and we lift both hips off the mat. So the sit bones are both facing to the ceiling. And then flatten the hands, option you're staying here. Or the elbows come to the mat, you stay here. Or super long arms, walk into the mat, and you stay here. If you don't want to do this pigeon, then you just simply come back onto your mat, and we do it upside down. So it's exactly the same, but there's no pressure on that knee, and it's exactly the same position. So you take your options, whichever one you want, here for a couple of minutes. For those who are in the full pigeon, at any time you can tuck your back toe and walk that back leg a little bit further away, making it a little bit more intense. Or well, you can ease out a bit and come up a little bit higher. Just check out that front knee. Always be aware of the front knee. If your hips are tight, 
it'll take it to the next joint along, which is the knee joint. And although we can open up the hips somewhat, we can't open up the knee joints. So it's vital that you're aware of what's happening in your body. Just a couple more breaths. And we'll walk the hands back underneath the shoulders onto the fingertips so we lift up into the back bend. And if you're on your back, then you'll just simply change legs. If you're coming with me, you're going to tuck that back toe which will enable you to lift the back knee off the mat and we'll glide back into the downward facing dog. And then the left leg will rise to the ceiling and the left knee will pass the heart, come to the left thumb. And again, back toe is tucked so we'll walk that back leg further away. We start to check out, come onto the fingertips and lift up to the back bend. Check out what that knee feels like and then lean to the left if you want to flex the foot, bring it a little bit more parallel if you want to, wherever it feels safe for the knee. Take an inhale, either stay here or exhale into the elbows or all the way down. Just a few more breaths. Walk your hands back underneath your shoulders, steeple the fingertips so we can rise up into a back bend. If you've been on your back, maybe take a sphinx posture, maybe just have a little sphinx. So just lay on your tummies and have sphinx. So you, you two will get the back bend. And then place your hands flat onto the mat. The back toe is tucked. We'll lift the back knee up and we'll push back into downward facing dog. Easy breathing. A couple of planks to finish off if you want to, or just lay down on your mat. Going on to our backs in a moment. Exhale, back to dog. Thank you, plank. Remember your plank. You can always have knees on the mat and ankles lifted. Make a calf plank. And let's do one more plank. Activate the plank. Knees down. Child posture. And then we'll simply come onto our backs. They are backs. You can have your heels in line with the buttocks. Arms down by the side of the body. We're going to lift up the buttocks and lift up the arms behind us if we want to. And then exhale, release. Upper back and lower back down. We we'll do four more. Inhale, lifting the arms if you want to, lifting the buttocks. Exhale, release. Don't go too high. Inhale, lift. 
Exhale, release. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. Last one. Inhale, lift. And exhale, release. Draw the right knee into the chest where we began our practice. Stretch your left leg long. With your left hand, take hold of the right knee and drag it across the body. Use your left hand to apply a little bit of weight. Take your right arm long out by the side of you and look to your right fingers. Our final twist. Three more breaths. Return to the center, bring your right knee into your chest, draw your left knee in, and simply change sides. So right leg is long, right hand on left knee, and over to the right. Stretch out your left arm, gaze to the left. Five breaths. And then slowly bring both feet into the chest. If you want to, you can lift up your head and take your nose between the knees. Have a look, nice, make a little ball of yourself. Release the head down. Feet flat onto the mat. Feet can remain here with Shavasana, so stretch the legs long if it feels appropriate. Turn the palms up to the ceiling. Soften the shoulders. So it's important now to bring a little bit of harmony back into the body by having a short relaxation. To soften the shoulders, the arms, the wrists and the fingers all soften. Upper back, Mid back and low back, just release a little bit more. The buttocks, the hips, the abdomen, all had a lot of work going on. Let's just release the thighs, front and back, soften. Back of the knees. Chin bones of the calves. Ankles. Top of the feet. Soles of the feet. And the toes. 